let's take a look at some other things here. So what you need to do is not only write to say back that up for a second, record the significant figures, you also have to read them based on somebody else's measurements. So you have to record them and interpret them from somebody else's measurements. So there's rules that you have to follow. Four hundred. Okay, and I'll write the number four hundred and five, and I'll write the number uh, point zero zero four zero. Okay, now here's really quick the rules. All digits that are not zeros count. So this digit will count. Um, so this would be one significant figure. Now the rule, <laughs> the zeros are the hard part. This is what always throws students are those zeros. Okay, the zeros count in three different ways. Now I have three different types of zeros here. I have a trailing zero, trailing zeros. I have a trapped zero. I think there's two p's in trapped. Okay and I also have a leading zero. And I'm telling you, the leading zeros always throw, I'm sorry, the zeros are what confuse students. Uh, this one down here would be a trailing zero. So three types of zeros, okay? Now, here's the rule. If you remember in your math class, you have the number four. They told you to put the decimal or not put the decimal. You can leave it. Get rid of it. Oops, wrong way. Oh, I guess it doesn't work. Okay, so you can put the decimal or get rid of it. Well, with that number, that's okay. If you have the number 10, decimal or no decimal. Decimal or no decimal. In science, that decimal makes a big difference. Okay, so here's what I'm saying. The rule is that that last zero means that you counted in the tens place or the ones place. So if I take that decimal away, that's telling me that I counted by tens. If I put this decimal in there, then that means I'm counting by ones. So it's pretty important to know whether you have the decimal or not. So if I'm looking at my number up here, since there's no decimal here, that's telling me that I counted by hundreds. So therefore this number here, let's change the color, would have a number of significant figures as one significant figures or one sig fig in that number okay so one sig fig I'm just going to abbreviate that SF um, I don't know what that is anyway um, over here trap zeros trap zeros always count they always count so in this case I would have three significant figures one two three trap zeros always count leading zeros never count Think about when your numbers, would I put a zero here in front of the 10 or a zero in front of the 10? No, I wouldn't do that. That wouldn't make any sense. So leading zeros, in this case because of the decimal, have to be here because they're placeholders. They're just kind of holding the spot for the number so that we can get it down to this small decimal place. Now, this is my first significant digit, so that's going to count. Now my trailing zeros only count if there's a decimal present. There's a decimal in the number that they draw. They draw, or everything has decimals, of course. But if they don't draw the decimal, trailing zeros don't count. In this case, there's a decimal here, so this digit counts. So these would both count two significant figures. Now, back to this one. No decimal, they don't count. So if there's a decimal present, your trailing zeros count. So the trailing zeros are the ones that are hard because we need them as placeholders. Okay? In this case, they measured that spot. Here, they didn't measure these. So I can't just put endless number of zeros here. This is confusing for a lot of students. I understand that and I know that you're gonna have a little bit of trouble with that. We're gonna work on it. So we'll talk about that more tomorrow in class. But the rules are non-zero digits count. Okay, so the fours, the fives count. Zeros count if they're trapped in between two non-zero digits. They will always count. Leading zeros never count. So those are your two always statements, always and never, always and never. Trailing zeros count if there's a decimal present. So if I wrote 400, 
with the decimal, that's now three significant figures. So that would now be three significant figures. Okay? All right, so I'm going to end this one, and I'll talk in the next one how to deal with these significant figures and calculations. But the general idea is um, be able to write significant figures um, from measurements that you make in the lab and to be able to read them from numbers that other scientists have written. All right, I'll take your questions tomorrow. Good luck, guys.